All right, today is final weld day. Um, the only reason I'm not just cutting straight to the time lapse is because I'm gonna give you some tips on it. So before I take the engine out, I'm going to complete as much or as many of those welds as I can uh, because I don't want the engine cradle to move at all during final welding. Now there is a system to final welding. You don't just attack like the whole front end or the whole back end because your welds are gonna compress at the joints. So what I do is kind of go to an X fashion on the top and then go to the back, do an X fashion halfway around and I'll rotate the chassis. You'll see it in the time lapse. Don't just hit all of your welds at once because it's gonna cause your frame to twist a, a little bit and it could make some, some bad joints on the opposite end of your of your chassis so I'm, I'm gonna do a time lapse hopefully you can pick up a little bit of what i'm doing All right, now that the chassis is all welded up, um, we can cut off this excess right here. Uh, the only reason this piece is wide is so you can fit it in the notcher to make your notches to fit over the tube. Now everything's strong and triangulated, so I'm just gonna trim that up. All right, hardware. You can reuse some of what came on the stock ATV, but some of the bolts you're just gonna need to get extended ones. And I got uh, locking nuts, nylon locking nuts for everything. All of this was about 80 bucks. Uh, I used McMaster Car because they have an awesome catalog system if you use their app. I'm going to reassemble our chassis.
right, so here's an example of what can happen uh, after you do your final weld. Um, there's a pretty tight tolerance on this piece because I wanted it to be strong. This is what keeps your rear end locked in. So as you can see, when I welded this bracket, it lowered, I don't know, a 16th or a 32nd of an inch, and now this bolt won't go in. It's so close, and I'm not gonna force it. I'm not gonna try to break anything. Um, if I did get this bolt in, it'd probably strip the threads off. So, some of this stuff, you just, you gotta adjust it a little bit. So, I've got my wife's scissor jack out of her car. Uh, a bottle jack would probably be a little easier. But I'm just gonna take this, and I'm gonna nudge it up a little bit. Now, you don't wanna go too far because it's probably going to be harder to get it back in place from the top down. Um, I already tried hammering on this a little bit with a four pound sledge and that, uh, that wasn't cutting. Uh, oh, let's see what that did. That was only about a turn. Let's see if we're getting anywhere. That didn't do anything. In case you wondered the strength, <laughs> this is just one inch tubing. This is made out of one and a half and one and a quarter inch tubing. So you can see the strength on this stuff is pretty awesome. And there we go. Beautiful. So here is a subscriber's chassis in progress. Uh, he might be building it better than I am. It looks really, really good. And I'm, I'm really, really happy to see this in, in somebody else's garage. It's pretty cool. Sorry there's no end monologue on this one. Uh, I was finished for the day and just forgot to shoot one. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.